Lord Busy General Affairs Council and it's obviously started so we won't keep you too long but obviously a lot on the agenda. The next EU legislative programme that's based on a strategic agenda as outlined by the Commission. We have discussion on EU enlargement um, and obviously what the next stages in the process will be. Also looking at the next European Council but of course uh, a discussion on the future relationship between Ireland and the UK and we've just come from a meeting with Michel Barnier so I'll let the Thonish to say a few words on that. Great, yeah. Um, no, we had a a very good meeting with Michel Barnier, as, as we always do. Uh, and uh, what's clear now, I think, is that the EU is ready uh, to open up formal negotiations next week. Um, uh, we have a, uh, a settled text now as of yesterday that I think will be confirmed at the GAC today uh, and, uh, uh, and then obviously taken on board uh, and confirmed by, by EU leaders later on this week. Um, and the EU does what it always does uh, in the Brexit process, which is to uh, to remain unified, uh, to be pretty clear in terms of, uh, of the approach uh, and to be on time. Um, you know, we, we set a target uh, to, to have a full negotiating mandate concluded and ready and agreed across the EU uh, by the end of this week uh, and we're certainly on schedule to do that. Uh, from an Irish perspective, uh, the text is, is strong, uh, it, um, as you would expect recognises the importance of protecting the Good Friday Agreement, the peace process. Uh, it also recognises very clearly in the language the unique geographical positioning of Ireland and therefore the vulnerabilities that need to be taken account of. Uh, and perhaps most importantly, it makes it very, very clear uh, that this negotiation in terms of creating a structured and hopefully positive future relationship uh, has also got to ensure that the agreements that that have already been struck and made in the context of the withdrawal agreement uh, are fully implemented. Uh, and of course, in the case of the Irish Protocol, uh, they need to be fully uh, implemented uh, and ready to go by the end of the year. Uh, because if there isn't an agreement on, uh, uh, on trade, or even if there is, uh, the Irish Protocol uh, and the, uh, the consequences of that um, uh, are are important in terms of facilitating smooth trade between uh, the UK and Ireland, uh, obviously involving Northern Ireland as well. So, you know, it's a, it's a substantial document that we're approving today, uh, but I think it is, it is a generous uh, and a fair <coughs> offer, effectively, to the UK uh, in terms of creating a future relationship that's good for the EU, that's good for the UK, and from our perspective, uh, protects, protects Ireland against what are, you know, significant vulnerabilities uh, in the context of, uh, of Brexit. Um, Minister, if, you, if, if the UK does not implement uh, in, in short order uh, the requirements of the protocol, what impact could that have on the free trade negotiations? Oh, I think it, it can have a very significant impact. I mean, I think, um, first of all, um, from an Irish perspective and from an EU perspective, uh, I think in some ways the implementation of agreements that have already been struck are the test of good faith and trust. Uh, and without good faith, good faith and trust, building a future relationship is not going to be easy. Uh, and so if there isn't progress on the infrastructure needed to implement the Irish Protocol as part of the withdrawal agreement in the next few months, uh, then I think that is uh, going to be a very worrying signal uh, for whether or not it's going to be possible to conclude something sensible before the end of the year. Um, I don't want to go beyond that today, but just to be clear, um, Michel Barnier uh, and the Irish government are at one on this. Um, uh, the withdrawal agreement involves significant commitments in the context of Northern Ireland through the Irish Protocol uh, that both the EU and the UK need to follow through on. Uh, if that doesn't happen, then I think it will uh, it will damage significantly the prospects uh, of being able to get even a bare bones trade agreement along with a number of other things that need to be done in place by the end of the year. Uh, but look, I think today we should be focusing on the positives. Um, the EU side is ready. Uh, the negotiating mandate is a very comprehensive um, and a very positive and generous one uh, in terms of signaling where we want to go with this negotiation. Uh, I hope that the UK will respond uh, in a positive sense too. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, let's get the negotiations underway and move them forward. But 
I think it's important uh, to put markers down at this early stage. Um, what has already been agreed in an international treaty needs to be implemented in full. Uh, and the committees that are going to be set up in the context of uh, the Irish Protocol are not committees that are set up to negotiate. They're uh, committees that are being set up to implement what has already been negotiated and agreed. Naomi here from the Irish Times. Thanks very much. Um, these high stakes trade negotiations, the coronavirus, does all this add greater urgency to the need to form an, a government in Ireland? It does, in truth. Um, you know, I said many times uh, during the election campaign that whether Ireland liked it or not, um, that Brexit was going to dominate Irish politics for the foreseeable future, and I think it will, um, because, of course, the future relationship uh, with the UK uh, is, is something that is going to fundamentally impact on the health of the Irish economy, its growth rates, uh, and, of course, how goods come and go. Uh, uh, in, in and out of our market, uh, which is based on exports um, with the rest of the European Union, but also with the rest of the world. Um, so, um, of course, uh, if we could have a government in place um, uh, following on from the general election, recognising the mandates that all parties have, uh, that would be great. But uh, I'm afraid it's not as simple as that. Uh, if it was, uh, we'd be making more progress on it. Uh, so I think it's going to take quite some time uh, to, uh, to deal with the new realities of Irish politics, which is that the political landscape is quite fractured, uh, and certainly Fine Gael will try to be constructive uh, in terms of how we move forward. And in many ways, the meetings that Helen and I are having today are a reminder of why it's important for a new government to be formed soon. Okay. okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thank you. Sir.